Hello there, YouTubers and fellow tankers. For those who are returning, welcome back. This is King's Court, and I am Shrine King, and today I'm going to be talking about the AMX 13F3, which is a tier 6 uh, on the track um, artillery unit. French, by the way. So, for those who are new, typically when I do the King's Court reviews in World of Tanks, I'm looking at doing kind of like a review and a guide. Um, some of the things that get covered in this is pros and cons, uh, modules, understanding of the tank and performance of the tank, how to best get uh, the key performance of it, where the which modules you should probably aim for first and then kind of like give some insights to the the line itself like how how does it compare then along with uh maybe cover some details on what to do in particularly bad matchups um if you're stuck in those so here here we are this is actually me showing off the tank so you'll see it's pretty simplistic looking now some things i should probably say is with artillery there isn't really a lot uh, to cover <laughs> in most parts so one thing I will tell you uh, to kind of get started is before I get really into this uh, with artillery there really isn't any um, how do I put it premiums for it now with the French line specifically they're one of the few that actually has a premium that's out there uh, I believe it's tier 3 or tier 4 and I forget the full name of it, but I know it's like the Lef H uh, and then some kind of number. If you are lucky enough to have that, that's great. It is very good in performance, so it's definitely worth it. Uh, that said, though, because it's lower tier, it definitely would take a lot of time trying to get a lot of experience to help boost the overall performance. So pros and cons of the t oh, I'm sorry. So, side note of that is one option that you do have is to go ahead and get or go from a light into this. So that way you could actually have premiums to boost the crew and get a lot of the crew skills up before you get into the tier 6 and then use the crew basically all the way through. So as you'll see there aren't even a lot of modules uh, for it obviously uh, with it. the As you can see here I'm using all of the top. So when you do get it I would highly recommend going that way uh, make sure to get the radio a lot of people don't really realize that but radio is kinda key um, that allows you to see all the way through the field now um, here you'll see I'm just going into gameplay so a lot of it is mostly about your positioning so some pros and cons so the pro of this is starting out at tier 6 it actually does have good splash which is not something you see on all the tier 6's uh, it also has really good alpha damage and good penetration, but that comes with its own hindsight as well, or I'm not hindsight, uh, limitations as well. So it is very fast. You're able to maneuver around if necessary. So if you ever notice, hey, a particular flank that you're on is losing, you can absolutely leave that flank and get to another flank. So that's one thing to bear in mind um, with this. Now, some of the cons though, right, is accuracy is not the best the aim time is not the best um when you're firing your ca your camo rating is not going to be the best because you actually have a bigger cannon so it makes it easier to spot you uh the other thing is the angling on it is not the best in comparison to a lot of the other uh lines themselves but as you can see um, on here, the the range of motion where you can aim is actually pretty good. So I mean, it overall with artillery, that's really kind of like limitations. So what I can kind of do is give a better guide in like how to best perform. So one thing you'll see that I'm doing is I don't generally aim right at a tank. I actually try to aim directly past it. Uh, usually the idea here is that I'm angling the round into the tank. So the idea is try to get it to actually go right into that tank. If you aim on top of the tank, the idea is that you're trying to get that shot to come up and go directly on that target. And then, of course, with random number generation, you can hit anywhere. Now, this should be a good example of the speed that I'm talking about. So here I see that the flank's kind of losing. That line's going to go away. So I need to get out of here. And you'll see I'm already up to 36. And it's just, I'm, 
apparently going to stop here and then decided, no, I'm crazy. I shouldn't stop. I do need to maneuver and get the heck out of here. So here we are. I'm going back. And you'll see again, I didn't have to travel that far. And I'm already up to 37, 40, 41. So this thing, it definitely can get up and go. And that's that's kind of a key point here is it really can do that. Now, as you can see, I was move, leaving. It doesn't really matter. It's just me and another artillery. So it's really a moot point for me to even try to leave. And I see, okay, well, this guy got taken care of. I'm most likely next. Um, but it turns out that that guy actually killed himself. I'm not that kind of guy. I won't do that. I think that's a real cheap move. But you'll see, I'm dodging, I'm weaving. There's gunshots everywhere, you know. Yeah, look at that. Shots everywhere. But, I mean, there you go. Like, it didn't take that long, and I got all the way across the field. Um, so that's that's kind of a key thing to note with it. So like I said, I mean, damage-wise, this thing's really good. So a lot of it comes down to, like, most artillery. One, you want to make sure that you get into particular spots um, where it's not going to be something people can get line of sight on you. So that way you can basically shoot and fire down on them. Uh, some things to note, right, is most artillery, if players are good, they'll call out where they got hit from because they'll see the indicator saying how they got hit. So then they'll, if they they know artillery play, they probably know the spots you'll be hiding at. So they can use the uh, trajectory of the hit and then tell their teammates where you shot from um, so that way you can get counter artillery. Now, by the way, if you don't know what counter battering is, the idea here is like, for example, if I was aiming in here, I wouldn't really have a target to look at. Instead, I would be looking and waiting to see when the round comes out and then shoot like that. Cause like you see how my round went in. Now you'll know, even though he disappeared, I did hit him, uh, because I didn't see a splash. So with counter battery, basically you'd see that same trail that of my round going in instead it would be coming out that tells you where the the artillery itself fired from and then the idea is just aim right there because the splash explosion from your shot would be good so here you'll see again i'm not aiming at the tank i'm aiming past that tank just slightly right and then bam nailed them right but you'll see like the the art like the the overall accuracy of where the round can be in rng that circle it could be anywhere in there so you always want to bear that in mind too when when trying to target a tank um especially if it becomes tighter in the front and stuff like that because that actually means the way that that angle is working the back the front is actually being absorbed mostly by the trajectory which means wherever you're aiming at is probably where that round will most likely hit so you'll see here, I'm not necessarily hitting these guys directly on. I'm getting pretty close. And here's a case where someone's trying to counter battery me. So that's where I'm like, all right, I got to move. So th that's one thing I would know is uh, to start here, I didn't really do that. I actually fired, I think, two rounds before I actually moved. Essentially, what you want to do is you want to fire a shot and then move. Uh, now, one thing a lot of people make a mistake about is they fire a shot and they want to see did their shot hit. So they wait. You do not need to do that. So the moment I fired this, I should be moving already. Now, I didn't. I waited. I did the thing that you're not supposed to do. And then I moved, right? So, Because I know, like, hey, they, they're probably looking. They already saw where I fired from. So I'm going to reposition and then move here. Yep, and then start aiming in again. Now, the other thing is, bear in mind, because of the reload times, this actually works pretty well. So you can fire, move a little bit. And then when you're down to about seven or eight seconds, that's when you want to start figuring out your target. Because usually you're looking at anywhere from four to eight seconds to aim in anyway. And that's just to get it like that. So here, this time, you'll see I did it right. I launched it, and here's how I know. So bam, I know I must have suppressed him. Someone shot him, but I did not hit him. So all I did was suppress him. And then for this particular stuff, you can do this. Now, one thing to note, right, if you're looking into this line, um, it's later in the tiers that it actually gets to where you will start having uh, auto-loaded, right, which means you'll have multiple rounds to fire. That's one of the kind of key things that's really cool about this, this line overall is that it does get an auto-loaded artillery line, uh, which makes it a lot of fun. But you'll see just starting out, like, honestly... This is pretty good. Now, a couple things I should really make keynote. If you are new to this and you're getting ready to start playing artillery, 
please, please do not run into it with like a 50% crew. It's such, it's so horrible in performance. Everyone pretty much recommends having a hundred percent crew, but even that, like, I understand if you're starting out, you might not have that. But like I said, the the way that I would probably do this is I would go down the light line, get to the tier six, and then I would probably grind the crew on a tier six premium, or I'm sorry, not tier six premium, but like a tier seven or tier eight premium that's out there, kind of like the ELC even 90 or the AMX 1357, I think is what it is. Any one of those, if you have those, great. Um, you basically train up the crew. I would make sure you get six cents. I would make sure you get concealment. Um, if you can get the ones that are like, uh, oh, what is it? Like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Darn it, why can't I think of the, the ability? It's <laughs> it's Brothers in Arms. There you go. So you get Brothers in Arms. And anything that's probably going to help you with aim time and stuff like that. Um, or even reloading, for example. The one that says, like, hey, if you're below 10%, now you reload faster. That's also really good because there are times where you might get counter-batteried and you're left with, like, just a small amount of hit points. Now, essentially, what happens is you become more dangerous as you can put out rounds faster. So I would work on getting like two or three skills most likely, and then I would probably take the crew, transfer it over into artillery because you can unlock um, a, the tier, this tier six artillery from the light line. And that way you're already, you already have a crew trained up. Now, now they're in artillery. Sadly, of course, now that they're trained in artillery, you can't run them with the premium uh, tanks unless you have that LHEF uh, tank that I was talking about. And then from there, you just kind of carry on with the line. So uh, bear in mind that if you really need to grind out more experience, then I would say like once you get to particular ones that you really enjoy um, and you already have everything unlocked, just start grinding on that crew. Use consumables to boost it because it's probably going to be your best bet anyway. Um, and artillery can be pretty pretty interesting because of the fact that you, you actually – um, typically do perform pretty well if you know what you're doing in artillery. And you'll see here, like, 1,400 damage is nothing to bat an eye at, you know, for Tier 6. Um, especially, like, yeah, for Tier 6, in being artillery, it's like, man, that's that's nutty. So, um, definitely that's probably what I would recommend um, for that. Uh, the other thing is, like I said, I would not try doing 50% at least bare minimum do 80% I would actually highly recommend sticking to doing 100% spend the gold to have it because it does make that much of a difference because um, you got to bear in mind even 10% on a 27.5 reload uh, you're you're still looking at over 30 now on that reload just from a 10% loss imagine at 50% you'd be spending almost a minute waiting for your reload and that's not including the fact that it takes effect to your accuracy the aim time like can you imagine having to aim at like 14 seconds i would lose my freaking mind um now with that said obviously with most artillery right gun rammers a uh, have to have uh, aim time uh, is a have to have, and then typically everyone runs camo net, right? Now you'll notice I'm not even bothering camo net. I didn't, I didn't really care. Um, but those are definitely the key things that you definitely want to make sure that you have, because it does make a difference. You'll see here, like I'm trying to be an asshole. I actually ram that guy to kill him. I don't recommend that. Uh, but that is something you actually see pretty often with th this kind of artillery is people will go charging at their targets to kill. Them. So again, this line definitely, definitely worth it, right? Once you get to the bat, like the higher tiers where you start having auto loaded, um, it is wonderful to have. Uh, so I definitely highly recommend it. Um, even over a lot of the other artillery, uh, when it comes to comparison, like I said, uh, the, Line itself is pretty good. It's going to be pretty good on the damage. Uh, the Germans are pretty accurate, where the Americans have better alpha, um, and the British also have good angling for when they try to shoot in. So hopefully this stuff kind of helps you guys. Like I said, artillery doesn't really have as much to cover and explain, especially like for tips and guides. There really is no bad matchup. All it is is about playing artillery the way you're supposed to play artillery. Uh, so I really hope that helps. Uh, again, I'll, I'll keep trying to cover like these this information as I'm going through it. And please feel free, like, subscribe, 
uh, look through my other videos. I have plenty of guides and reviews for different tanks. And I'm going to try to make sure to also get those kind of reviews out, especially when the on tracks are going. So that way you can grind that out. All right. Have a good one. Catch you next time.